What's up, y'all? It's a wonderful it's Wednesday. Up. It's a worshipful Wednesday. It's a what's up Wednesday inside the faith room. Y'all, come on in this room. Have a seat. Sit on down and get ready. What's up with it, good people? What's up, Nate? It's a winning Wednesday over here. It is. It is. Indeed, it is. It's a winning Wednesday. What up, Faith Room? Holla oh, at man. your boy. And your in hot. Lisa Sanders, Di um, Diary Turner, y'all come on in and you know how we do it in here. Let me put it up just in case you're new. First, yes, sir. let's you go. Know, we come in. We speak to everybody, of course, and then we begin to declare our day. And then, Nate, what's next? We tag and we share. You better know it. We have built the platform because of the T and the S. The tag. The T and the S. We and tag then. and we share. What's, what's up, up, everybody? Up, brother Don Burst, Pastor Don Burst is in the building. BB, are you with me? Oh, yeah. We <laughs> have a joke. We ain't going nowhere. Good morning, y'all. What's up, Dr. Burst? Jokes. Y'all remember Joke 79? You remember her first time? Came in as a guest. Now she's still here. <laughs> yes. Now you are connected as family. You are what up? In the Joke family. 79 in the building. Yeah. What's going on, Latoya Andrews? Good morning, Kiana. See, Let's she go. said it's a working Wednesday. Let's go. Hey, y'all, listen. There's an elephant in the room that we're dealing with today. And it's on relationship trauma. So listen, mm. I need you to tag and share Detroit is in the building. Do you yes. hear me? And yes, uh, yes, Detroit yes. don't know but one way to come, and that's all the way real. So come on. <laughs> Get them up in here, y'all. Oh, Lord. Tag and share anybody you know. Your homegirls will be blowing up your phone with their relationship drama. Right. Come on in here and get, get this in here. once and for all. We're going to all get it together. Your homeboys. Right. Get them up in here. Uh, Malika says, good morning, Faith Room. Please say a prayer as my family and I prepare to have a more memorial service for my auntie slash mom. Claiming today will be no stress, no mess, no drama. Come on here. That's it, it girl. Oh, and so, Father, we stand in agreement with oh, Malika God. right now in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for a beautiful homegoing service. Thank you for family that will come together in peace and in love. And God, we declare with her no stress, no mess, no yes, drama. God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come All on right. here. Let's go. All right. It's done. It's a wait on the Lord Wednesday, says Diane Miller. What's up, Diane? Come Good on. to see you. All right. Good morning. I'm tagging, y'all. That's why my head down. I'm not being rude. I'm tagging. We're used to it. All right. Thank you so All much. All right. We're used to Hallelujah. it. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Come What's on. What's going on? Hey. Good morning, Blake Ewings. It's a worthy is the lamb Wednesday. All right, sir. Let me see. Can I do it? Worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb. You are holy. Come on, Pastor Nate. You sound all right. That was just a hard lamb, though. Why was it so harsh? I'm tenor, baby. I'm a tenor. You don't mean that, and you said that the Come same on, way. Boo. I'm a tenor now. Tenor don't mean harsh. That lamb. lamb. Why? Why? Okay, what do you call it, Cherie, when singers do that? Worthy is the lamb. Why too they much, do that? Too much. Okay, I just wanted to know. I be trying to follow the lead of the people who know what they be doing. Your big brother. Asked me. Look, Kiana, now Kiana got your back today. Now you want to be my friend because you what you need. <laughs> Let me, let's give a shout out to Kiana. Kiana led praise and worship Sunday. Something she hasn't done in a long time. Now, Man, I'm so proud now, of Kiki. Kiana, now we got to remember when you were um, with me at Antioch. Remember you had a you had a hit, the um, Ty Tribbett, yes. the victory. Yep. Remember that? Was that yep. the right song? And I C T O R Y, ladies. Yeah. Chose the generation at St. Mark back in the day. That used to, boy, they used to tear up them youth conferences that. Well, I'm going to say Antioch did it first. Listen to me. We ought to have a reunion, boy. I tell you that. Don't let me get in Antioch here. full gospel Baptist church youth choir. They all grown now. Man, Kiana was a baby, man. That's why I'm so proud of her, man. So proud. Yeah. What's up, y'all? We just flashback Wednesday. Flashback Wednesday. What up, Jason? Lovelace in the room. 
Jay Love. Yeah. Hey, Jay, I'm going to get me a chain like that one day, dog, and just let it hang low. <laughs> hey, Ramona. Do your chain uh, hang low? Do they while I do the fun? You remember that song? It was Jason. Jason, were you in Chosen Generation or something? No, Jason was oh. Jason was in the back chilling. Okay. He just, okay, reminiscing with you. Jay, Jay Love remember them days. All right, y'all. That's right. You are from St. Mark. Duh. Forgot about Honey me. Honey Payne. What's up, Connie? Okay. Gwen Rose Kelly. Good morning. Listen, she doing the doggone thing. Even though she's about to go to a memorial service, she getting the people in the room. You see that? I see it. That's what she do. That's it. We appreciate it. Listen, if you're a first timer today, if today is your very, very first time hanging out with us in the faith room, please let us know by typing the number one yes. in the chat along with where you're watching from. Where in the world are you? Where are you watching from? We want to know. We want to celebrate you. We want to make you feel welcome. Yes, we and, do. Um, I, I'm going to go on and, and say this. If you come in today, we guarantee you're going to come back. That's what we do. Put and y'all, we're we're right at, Sheree. We're open. Uh, I want to say we're close to 9,000 followers. We're we about 1,000 away from 10,000. 10,000, y'all. When we make 10,000, it's going to be a big celebration. Turn up. Oh, we got one. There we go. Tangela. Tangela. What's up, T -Rob. Also, where are you watching from, lady? Let us T -Rob know. T-Rob in the building. What's Tangela up? Tangela Decker Robinson. Y'all make her feel welcome. Let us know where you're watching from. What's up, Tom? They're saying hey, welcome. Hey, Tanja, I give nicknames. So your nickname is Tom. What's up, Tom? All right. Oh, today is Lakeisha's birthday. Jason is shouting out his wife. Lakeisha is a faithful faith woman. So y'all make her feel welcome. She's in here welcoming the first timer. So she's yeah. in the room. I know Jay this got his name out today. Okay. Wow. Welcome. I'm in Cersei Little Rock. in the building. Cersei. I can right. tell when people aren't from here because they say Searcy. Like, you're, you're, <laughs> not, you're not from Arkansas. Clearly. Right. Searcy. Three. I'm yeah. feeling your shirt, girl. Lean back. Let me That's see. I like the dress. The it's I like dress. the cut. I'm almost thinking that ain't off the shelf, girl. That look custom now, honey. No, it is not custom. It's just, uh, you, you know, it's, it's summertime now. I get to wear my, my dresses and such with my sandals. It's not summertime, but. Uh, well, it, it's 90 some degrees, so. It'll yeah. be 40 tomorrow in Little Rock. It'll be 40 degrees tomorrow. No lies detected. And you'll come in here with a, a, dog <laughs> with, a sweat, with a hoodie on in the morning. Come on. What happened this summer? No, Randy right. Jones in the building. Good morning. Oh, come on, Pearly. So listen, I went and, you know, got me some some new dresses and sundresses and sandals. I'm ready. I'm just yeah. so excited because we had a terrible winter to me. All the storms and the ice and the snow. So pe while people are complaining about the hot weather, I'm over here celebrating. Come I, on, I won't complain. I won't. Cherie, we're going to start in three minutes. Jackie okay, we're at 208, 212. Let me do my part. 212 alive right now. Come on, y'all. Let Tony go. Hitch, it says it's 100 degrees in Vegas. Well, it's going to be 100 degrees on Friday. It's 100 in Vegas? Good gracious yep. goodness. 100 degrees. And desert, boy. Somebody in Vegas, you just had to be a good, you, your mind just had to be right. You know what? They look at all that dirt and say, you know what? I want to live here. No, let's put up some what? casinos. Because it didn't... Ain't Los Vegas Boulevard didn't start that way. Somebody I had need to see the residential areas because I, you know, I really never put houses with Vegas. Right. Somebody so had a while vehicle. I was there. I was able to, to to drive through some neighborhoods and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Somebody had a vision. What's up, Shelly? Jermaine says it's a I am worth it Wednesday. What's up, JJ? Good to see you. Y'all tag away. Come on. Let's Listen, get the see, I just got distracted again. Yeah. Focus. Well, you got to talk so I can do what Focus I need to so do. so you can uh, go to the bucket and get you a prize this morning. <laughs> 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 
You, you know, know Tariq, we used to go to the bucket and do like this. Why we did like this? Go all the way down, move stuff around, and come out with crap. Yeah, that was my class. We had a bucket in 12th grade. You lying. I know you lying. <laughs> I know you lying. Listen. I'm going to tell you this, though. Some of these teachers, y'all need to watch them because my 12th grade teacher. Y'all remember the, the book? Y'all remember the story Macbeth, right? Did you read I Macbeth? I do. I do. I quoted from Macbeth Sunday in my sermon. Cherie, every doggone class, we would just come into class. She got a free check. I mean, she did. I ain't going to call her name. But all we did was somebody, we just read Macbeth, and then the bell rung, and we left. That was it. Just sitting up reading, ain't no, no questions, no comprehension, Cherie, no essays. This is what I'm telling you. She got it. She had it made. How did you get a grade? Uh, Just for showing up? Do? Speaking was, of grades, stop. What was the title of the book? That's, yeah. Macbeth. Great. Good job, Nate. Go to the bucket. Nate, please tell me you lying. That's all. And we had a guy. I wish my friend was in here. Vince will be in tomorrow. Come on. Put your, you, listen, eat your last honey bun today. <laughs> Put if you got a workout gear on tomorrow. Eat your last honey bun today, cause Vince coming in swinging tomorrow. But no, Sheree, she would. Uh, we we had a guy named John Terrace in our class, and his his dad was a preacher, so he would read the story like he was hooping. And uh, I, best, I mean, we would just no, no, indeed. So, so let me go a... back. Let me stop. Speaking of grades. I got my, my paper back, my grade uh -huh. for my paper. I got a B plus, 88. It ain't an A, but it ain't an F. Cherie, 88, girl. You better celebrate now. now. I am celebrating, honey. Trust and believe. Travis say his Spanish teacher in high school would play gospel music and let them sit quiet. That's all. Come on, Travis. Oh, Mel Moore in the room being messy. I took French and I, we had to do the French national anthem for our final. And I cannot tell you what that. I didn't take French. I took Latin. And then I had to take Spanish in college. He said you that's a husband dress. I can't hardly stand him. Congratulations to Mel Moore. He graduated. Liberty. Um, mm -hmm. Liberty, Liberty, Liberty. That's the insurance. All right. Y'all, we're going to start in one minute. Where we at, Sheree? 2:34, and I can't oh, wow. find I can't find my notification. I, as soon as I get it, I'll share on my I'm page. Just tagging some people in right now. That's what I'm doing right now. Tagging yes, some. I don't people have the patience in. to do all that. I'm just all gonna right, share it on my page. You're doing good. Anybody you know with some relationship stuff? Okay, here we go. Let's get, get them in, them in this here. room. Let's go. I'm tagging right now. Two, and I got a tag. You know, today is gonna be very candid. I just know that because of who's going to be, you know, leading the discussion today. 100. All the way 100. All the way 100. Is uh, Damon Allen in the room today? Damon from Detroit. I don't know. Vince said, I took Spanish in high school and French in college. Can't speak a lick. Me either. I studied enough to pass my test and to do my work. Now, Latin did help me because it it is the the, the foundation of where we get a lot of our English words. So if I don't know what an English word means, I can kind of look at it and see the Latin word and I know what it means in Latin. So that kind of helps. But right. it's not a it's not a fluent language that anybody speaks anymore. But now that's Spanish. Mm -mm. Hola, hola is all I know. Hola, hola. Muy bien. Stop. That's all I know. Don't I can't hold no conversation. Okay, Damon says he's here. Detroit. Damon, Damon, rep your neighborhood in the Deast. Let me see if Dana Barry know where you rep. Rep your, rep your neighborhood. Uh, Tiffany Michelle Brown said, Dana D. Barry, I'm here, big sis. Can't wait. She's in the room. Come on in here. Y'all come on in. A, Dana got a following. And they coming in the room. All right, Sheree, let's go on and get our sister Ready? in. Ready? 234. 234? Uh, mm -hmm. All right, good deal. One more tag. I'm tagging some cousins with relationship drama. Hold on. Get your butt <laughs> up. Excuse me, y'all. Get your butt go up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Get them in, honey. Get set free today. Get them up. behind up right now. Get okay, so we got some people that took French. 
Um, okay, Reginald White, Six, and Davidson. Is that in Detroit? It must be. That must be the D. Damon Allen said, West Seven Mile. West Seven in the building. Anybody else in here from Detroit? Rep your city. Rep where you come from. If you're from Detroit or you're in Detroit, where? Dana say that's Detroit. That's Detroit. Yes. Okay. Okay. When I was living in Cleveland, here's my story, Dana. I was living in Cleveland, y'all. Detroit was about a two and a half hour drive. So y'all remember Gold and Silver Pond with that pawn shop show in Detroit that used to be out there? Uh, well, anyway, I decided to leave Cleveland and drive to see the pawn shop. Okay. Let me tell y'all something. Detroit ain't nothing to play with. I got up out of there, Cherie. Did you go in and you just want to drive I by? I went in, didn't see nobody famous that I saw on TV. I'm like, what are people that I be seeing on TV? Oh, they ain't, they in the back. Oh, can I get a picture? Okay. No. Y'all remember that big security guard on that show? The big, the big black dude? I forget the name of that pawn oh, show. Crazy. The pawn shop. Okay. Dana, all I know is this, my sister. One guy told me, sir, you need to get out of this neighborhood. That's all I, I wouldn't lie to y'all. You must have looked like you didn't belong. 18 potholes later, I got up out of there. Potholes. <laughs> you driving fast. Why are you like this? Why? American jewelry. Come on, Reggie. Okay. See, Reggie. that's why I know Pawn Stars. Is that the same show you're talking about? Pawn. No, that, that one in Vegas. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the only one I know of. Yeah, that one's that one's in Vegas. Anyway, y'all, let's go to work. 271. Listen. Let's roll. 271. Y'all listen. Dana Barry, friend of the faith room, yes. powerful woman of God. You may you may have seen her on the Word Network. She's a she has a powerful prayer ministry, intercession ministry. She's a yes. preacher, she's a worship leader. Yes. Uh Dana Barry is the bomb.com. So, Cherie, I know y'all have built a great bond and relationship. Yes, I love her. That's your sister. So y'all yes. welcome back to the room from the D Dana D Barry. Come on, D. What's Yay! up? Woo! Hey, oh. hey, y'all. What's up? I D said I'm starting off by talking about my art with the fact that that I wasn't I wasn't even included in the family reunion and um and and wh wherever y'all was at. I was like, wait though. Why wasn't I there? I know COVID happened, all that. So I oh, said, you're coming to my heart out first. You were coming at first, remember? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. I'm like, let me let me get my weight off me first. Let me. Oh, let I got me, me. All is well. No, I understand for sure. Absolutely. Yes. But it looked like y'all had an amazing time. So we did. Yeah. We did. We did. Dana, you are loved. You know what? Your realness, it's your realness for me. Yes. I mean, from the gate. You've always been 100. And yeah, absolutely. We are dealing with a powerful subject matter, Dana, and I believe you are the person to do it. Now, Faith Room, we've already told Dana that we may have to bring her back because I don't think we're going to finish today, to be honest with you. So uh, we're talking about mental maintenance, mental wellness, not yeah. necessarily mental illness, mm -hmm. though it is mental health month and we yeah. all only focus on people with mental illness but we're trying to stay mentally well and Sheree mm -hmm. did a good job at explaining that yesterday and so Dana one of the concerns that we see often in the world and even in the church good thing about the faith room we got folk who ain't never been to church mm -hmm. in fact Dana this is their church this is good stuff this yeah. is so it's relationship trauma Dana Ooh, it, yeah. It's it's real and it's causing a lot of people as as tough as they try to be, as hard as they try to be, it's mm -hmm. affecting their walk. It's affecting how they move and yeah. navigate. Their purpose is being, you know, put on pause. They're up, wondering, worried, concerned. So we want to deal with the fact that you know after the trauma, relationship mm -hmm. is it's real. Mm -hmm. How do we deal with it? How do we get over it? And then we're going to deal with the tough question of marriage, significant others, family, friends, all of this stuff that's happening in relationships. So, sis, we're just going to release you. I have questions. Sheree has questions that's coming in. Faith Room, you can ask your questions at the appropriate time. 
And we just gonna see what the Lord will do on today. I'm here for it, Sheree. I'm, I'm here. I'm ready to roll. Let's Pastor Dana, go. I'm gonna let you go, sis. Okay, so hey y'all, welcome, welcome. I'm I'm glad to be back. I'm honored to be back. Um, and when we talk about relationships, we're talking about relational, being able to relate, mm -hmm. um, having relationship with people, um, whether it's, it's siblings, it's a, a spouse, it's your children, coworkers. The relationships could be could span so far when when we're talking about trauma because. Trauma can happen in any any of those scenarios with whoever we are in a relationship with. And we always look at relationships as male, female marriage and stuff right. like that. But it is so vast. So for me, um, I I just like to say I've, I've done the hard work. And, and when I say that, I'm saying I just want to be whole and healed and well. I don't mm -hmm. want to be sick. I don't want to be traumatized. I don't want to have PTSD. I don't want to um, operate like that. But mm -hmm. when we talk about being well, because that's where we're starting, I am well now. I'm very yes. well. Yes. I'm very aware. I'm very oh. alert. Mm -hmm. um, I know my triggers. I know what words you say to me that I don't like. I know when you're talking to me and it's about to go to the <laughs> left. Come on. Let's <laughs> now. And I have to count in my head, or or I have to say, hey, 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 let's not let's not go there because that's 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 gonna take us in another direction. I've learned that. I've learned that being friends with certain people could be detrimental to my well being and my right. head space. So mm -hmm. those people I kind of shy away from. I'm I'm never the type that wants to throw people away, but I understand my space, and I understand right. that if you are a liar. I don't want to be friends with you because I don't know when you're telling the truth. And I don't want to have to try to figure all that stuff out. Oh, um, no, nah, it's that's just not going to work for me. So oh. I have learned over over time being the age that I am now. I'm kicking 50 in the butt. In a, I'm Come on, girl. In the butt. I know I don't look like it, but I'm kicking 50 in the butt. <laughs> so I have more, more experience, more wisdom that, mm -hmm. that God has given me. Um, and so I just, uh, every relationship is important to me. When I first was on here, um, I, there was, there was a liking, there was a click. There was a something that happened between elder Sheree and I, that we have continued. Mm -hmm. No wow. one can talk every day, every week, once a month, but, but I can reach out to her. Hey, how you doing? You good? And, yeah. and vice versa. So relationships are very important to me mm -hmm. and them being well, we're right. like the, them being uh, very well-rounded relationships or, or relationships that are healthy is very important. And so we have to know how to navigate those things yeah. and, and, and keep ourselves in a safe place. When you're relate, when you have a good relationship with people, you can be safe. You can right. be safe. Come on, yeah. be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You can, you know, you can get naked in front of them, not That's literally, it. but but you can get naked as it relates to what's going on in your world, right. how you're feeling. And so there was some things going on in my world for the past 15 days that kind of rocked me, that kind of took, mm -hmm. you know, that was kind of like, wait, what's going on? What's happening? And every day there was a new scenario coming in and there was new things that were being said and we were trying to figure all those things out. So I had people that I could say that to, right. hey, this is what's happening. And so Cherie was one of those people I could say, hey, this is what's happening. I'm not, I'm not ignoring y'all on purpose. Right. I'm just kind of blown back by what's mm -hmm. happening and I could feel the sincerity of wow. her response back to me. And you could feel the prayers of the people that I did divulge that information to. And so when I don't yes. go on social media to uh, to put out my personal business per se, yes, people know I'm married. Yes, people know I have children. But when it comes down to the intimate, intimate details of what's going on in my world, I really don't make social media right. that space. So when I posted yesterday and said, hey, you know, y'all need to pray for the people that don't put their personal that business. That was funny. I that thing, listen, I don't put it out here, but is anybody feeling like, do you have any discernment? Can y'all pray for the intercessor? Right. But no, but, but that's just real that you can tell the toxicity of a person Come or on, the Daniel. space of a person by how they post. Come on. That's, that's good. good. Right. You're posting and it's Ooh, always good. derogatory and negative and it's always something to stir Ooh. up confusion and mm -hmm. do all of those types of things. Then we know that we probably need to recommend you to a, to a therapist, a coach, a, a counselor, somebody, because you are spewing out your sickness yeah. on social media. Come so 
Uh, so I like to be healed and whole. So that's why most of the things that I post are just inspirational or empowering yeah. or encouraging. And, you know, so I just think for me, I'm just in this heal space. That don't mean I don't have, little, you know, little cracks and crevices of things that I need to work on and get, get together and say, girl, whoa, 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 pull that back. And Holy Spirit has to say, girl, if you don't be quiet, just be quiet. Just go get in the corner and sit down and shut your mouth. Okay. So, you know, you got to have that relationship with God that he yes. can just check you real fast and ain't no offense. It's like, oh, okay, yep, I'm going to go sit down and be quiet. So that's my that's my whole healed space is that mm -hmm. I've done the work and mm -hmm. it was work to get to this to this space of saying, um, no, I, that, that person, I don't feel comfortable with them being this close to me. No, yeah. I don't feel comfortable divulging this much information. No, I'm not going to post that on social media because I don't, I don't want people, I don't, I don't want God to be embarrassed. Come wow. on now. That's, good, and that's yeah. my prayer. My prayer is God, I don't want to embarrass so you. And so because I don't want to embarrass God, there are certain things that I'm just not going to entangle myself in. And there's certain things I'm just not going to respond to. Like, I want to respond to certain things people post and then uh, got me and my husband looking at each other and we bust our lap and say, you saw that same post? And, and we both was like, but uh, uh, we didn't post, we didn't respond to that because we are healed and whole people. Yeah. And so I just don't want to be in, in I don't want to be entangled and ensnared in mess because mm -hmm. I'm healed and mm -hmm. I want to protrude healing. I believe that God has given me a bomb. B A L M. I yes. have a bomb of how I talk to people, how wow. I relate to That's people, it. how I post, and all of those things that cause people to be healed and want to come. If they're That's sick it. and they come in contact with me, they want to be healed That's because it. That's what I protrude healing. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so, Dana, you said one of the signs then of you knowing you were well was that you did not entangle yourself with certain things again. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I think everybody need to type in, and, and you maybe heard it before, Dana, we repeat what we don't repair. We do. That's good. We do. I think that's something we need to type in. Okay. We repeat what we don't repair. So you obviously are repaired because you refuse to repeat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I did repeat. You did. Mm -hmm. I did. Talk about that season. Talk about so, that season. So coming out of divorce, coming out of separation and divorce, there is this what I've talked about on another live um, before is that you go through this season of even though your your marriage may have been toxic and may have not been well for you, is that there still was a space in your bed. There mm -hmm. still was someone there. Mm -hmm. So in my head, my oh. head space was, oh, my God, I'm so lonely. I just want somebody to talk to. I just want male companionship. So I went out on dates with guys that I knew what was it was a waste of my time. It was just to fill a void. Come on. So I was repeating. And what I found is that I was with different talking to different guys, not sleeping with all these guys, but going out to date, dating them in, mm -hmm. in um uh what's the word I want? Entertaining their, yeah. their words and entertaining their company because I was used to I have been married since I was 18, 19 years old. And so now I'm almost 30 or 31 years old. So that's a long span of time to yeah. have had somebody in my right. life um, in that way. And so I'm just like, I just, uh, this is a different face, but this is the same spirit. Mm -hmm. A lot of this was the same spirit that Good. I had. Oh, with. And so when you're dealing with manipulation, deception, lies, cheating, all of the things that 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 that, that, that my, my previous marriage had, had taken me through, I then connected myself with uh, camouflage people that there was counterfeits. This morning, um, I'm, this month, I'm praying um, every day, 6 a.m. or every Wednesday, excuse me, at 6 a.m. And this month, I'm covering families. This morning, I cover single people. And one of the things that I told them is we got to pray against dating booger bears. Like you literally, what's a booger bear? What's a booger bear? You literally attracting people who don't want to have any serious relationship. They mm -hmm. all they want to do is screw you, or all they want to do is 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 parade you around. All they want to do is waste your time, and yeah. they're standing in the way of who God ultimately has for you That's as good. a booger bear. 
somebody who who ultimately is just a liar they don't have what they say they have it doesn't take long for you to figure it out um mm -hmm. but you continue to talk to them because of the lonely space within yourself and mm -hmm. so you have to, to fill those voids That's with real. the right things and so i found myself filling the voids with oh you want to go out yeah let's go out Mm -hmm. Oh, you called me. Yeah, let me sit on the phone and talk. You wasting time when all the signs that you were not authentic. Oh my God, who I needed? Oh in the, I didn't need you. I, I you oh. were not good for me. I just continued on and something just wasting time. Yeah, me as a preacher. Hello. So yes. it's not about your title. It's just about uh, being a human being and knowing yes. that there is this void of loneliness that's there and mm -hmm. you're filling it with all the wrong things. Right. I got to yeah. ask you this. Are there any female booger bears? There are female booger bears. Yeah. I talked about that this morning too. It's definitely female booger bears. Absolutely. <laughs> that just pull on men. No, they don't want a real relationship. And I talked about it this morning. I said, you, you, sir, you are a part of the three or four others. They see, they sleep with you and you put money on a nightstand and they got another person that's going <laughs> to put money on a nightstand. So they are using all of y'all to pay their bills Ooh. and to them look in a certain way, but they really don't want anybody because they don't have an appetite for mm. commitment come on i had to deal with it because because when because yeah. the stigma is on men being nope. whores no, and it's trifling women child it's, it's they got one women. for everything they need it's one for everything they one need. one for everything this is the one i go out with because he looks a certain way he come dressed on hard this is one over here he got good money so all i gotta do is talk real good to him and he gonna make sure that certain bills yes. are paid if i'm low on something he gonna make sure that's good they have they yep this is the one i take on he takes me on my trips yeah uh -huh. this one I can fuck around my house yeah yeah mm -hmm. it yep. ain't so dana it's so so Dana, how, let me ask this, Dana. How long were you married? Let me deal, since we're on the relationship okay. piece, how long were you married? I was married 17 years. All right, 17 years. I'm going to deal with this elephant here for married folk, all right? Come and, on. you know, Dana, you churchy. I'm churchy. Cherie churchy. But we mm -hmm. real now. In fact, Dana said, y'all want me to put Pastor Dana on my little name? <laughs> I said, no, I'll be Dana today. <laughs> um, I want to deal with this elephant because... Uh, we hear all the time God hates divorce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I heard it. Divorce mm -hmm. is a sin. We mm -hmm. hear it all the time. And let me say this from the onset. I don't endorse divorce. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I do not. Please, on record, Pastor Nate, I'm not endorsing. Here's a question I do have, though. Um, I'm married, but yet unhappy, unfulfilled. Where is the line? Where's the line, Dana, between fighting like hell for my marriage? Because I'm going to be honest with you. You don't see a whole lot of fight in this day and time. True. It's 1-800-LATER, out of here. 35 minutes, you can be divorced. Twenty nine ninety five. It's mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. Where's the line, though, Pastor D? Or Dana, I'm sorry. Seven mile, Dana. <laughs> Where's the line between fighting like hell for my marriage or having a peace of mind? Because we hear all the time, well, they ain't committed adultery, they ain't cheated. So, you know, grandmama tell you, y'all work through that thing. I'm fighting like hell, but I ain't got no peace. And so many folk in the church, Dana, mm -hmm. ain't even sleeping in the bed with their spouse. But it's a public mm -hmm. spectacle on social okay. media. But that, where's the line? Pastor D, what made you say, you know what? You know what? Y'all going to talk about me, but I'm done. What, what was it for you? I don't mean to be nosy, but I want oh, to be no, nosy. you're fine. So let's just start here. The stats say 50% of people in the church are getting a divorce from their first marriage. The second marriage is a 60% chance of divorce. The third marriage is a 70% chance of divorce. These are the stats that we have looked at. We have researched. So for me, uh, it was, so let's, let's just deal with this and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a dive in, but let's just ask this question. Did you marry the right person in the first place? Come on now. So if you didn't marry the first person, the right person in the first place, you are already at a disadvantage. Come on, if you Daniel. married the person because they, you know, somebody prophesied to y'all and told y'all that that was your husband, but you didn't consult God 
about it and God didn't tell you that's who it was. We put a lot of trust in man and what man says, God says, yeah. Yeah. instead of going and consulting God for ourselves. That's why you have a prayer life. That's why mm -hmm. you can consult God. That's why, that's why, that's why they're, that's why Jesus died so that you didn't right. have to go to the high priest. You, you can go to God for yourself and talk to him about every issue in your life. And so for me, when I said enough was enough for me, it had everything to do with my children, more of my children than it did me. And that was when we were moving from house to house. And finally, we got to this one house and I looked and I said, my two oldest girls, uh, I said, well, are y'all going to unpack y'all boxes? What y'all doing? I like y'all room just still look like we, you know, we just got here. And they said, mama, because why are we unpacking if we're going to move again? Wow. We'll be moving again soon. Come on now. So yeah. something triggered in me and said, this is not a good space. Uh, atmosphere for your children right. this is now. not a good example for your children that they have literally experienced the repo man knocking on the door saying i'm about to take y'all vehicle i just opened y'all garage and that's y'all car right there okay i'm about to take that because y'all ain't pay y'all didn't pay y'all bill Come on. these are the things my children saw walking in a house where they could you could see the your breath your, your the coming out your nose from, because it's so cold in the mm. house because the, the DTE bill up here is DTE. The, the gas bill wasn't paid. Or you coming home and there's a blue mark outside in front of your house because your water is off. Wow. So for me, it boiled down to those kids that did not deserve Come on that now. type of lifestyle. That's it. So I, I I I decided my children meant more to me than continuing to be fake. And mm -hmm. yes, so when you talk about facades, absolutely. I absolutely walking yeah. around, smiling, sitting on the front row, doing praise and worship, being the intercessor, mm -hmm. doing all of these things for the, the front of it all, the fake of it all. And I was miserable. Come I on. was miserable. I had, I had acid reflux. They say it comes from eating all types of food. It also comes from stress. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I had acid reflux. I had gained so much weight out of my misery. So I had to make a decision. My kids cannot continue like this. Mm -hmm. And I can continue like this. And then not even just, to, you know, not to dog him. You don't even deserve us all staying like this. Oh, it's something about you. Obviously, I'm not the woman for you that you don't feel I'm good enough to make sure these bills are paid. Come on. Wow. To make sure these oh. lights stay on. You don't love us enough to make sure that we, that we have adequate, <laughs> adequate transportation. So... I had to make a stand. God, would God want me to? Is this okay with God that I'm okay, that my kids are suffering? Is it okay with God? And I had to come to resolve that I don't care what y'all church folk talking about because y'all oh, miserable yeah. too. So you just want me to be miserable, <laughs> which some of y'all are miserable, and you want me to be miserable with you. And so I'm not doing that. And so I no, I'm not no, I made a decision that enough is enough. And we just let bygones be bygones and we just count up the cost and keep it moving because we're not gonna keep doing this. But I also had church people to say to me, I know you're not talking about getting no divorce. Come Marriage on. is honorable unto the Lord. Come on, I know you, but you ain't even call me in the office and ask me what happened. You just going off whatever you're hearing in the church. Come on church. now. You, but you, but you are a mother figure mm -hmm. in the church. You are a mother figure to the surrounding areas. We look up to you and respect you. But you're 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 standing in your pulpit, looking at me and saying, "I know you ain't talking about getting no divorce." But you ain't even asking me, "Are my kids okay? Am I okay? Do we have food, lights, gas on? Now that we're separated, you you're not you're not trying to find out about my well being. Come on, so I made a choice that I'm gonna look out for me and my children's well being, and this got to end. I'm, I'm, I'm. So, Dana, what do you say to that couple in their men? Somebody put it in here earlier. Pastor Nate, that's me. Sharia will be right back, y'all. Somebody said, that's me. Uh, they're in it right now. Let me try to find that comment. Uh, somebody just said, fake your way out so you can lead and see your way out of the situation. That was a brother that said something very powerful uh, in here, Dana. Simply put, he's in it. So what do you say mm -hmm. to the person Um who is in the situation, they're unhappy. Again, counseling, you know, mm -hmm. you, you do all this other stuff. What, what do you say to that miserable husband, miserable wife, the home, you, the kids feel the toxicity, the, the tension, 
what what advice do you have for them? And couples, I'm giving it to us. I'm married. You're married. Uh, you're not married. I'm not married. I don't care who it is. I mean, whoever it is in the room, Dana, what would you say to them? First of all, I would say I what I don't do is I don't tell people to stay. I don't tell people to to, to leave. I have a friend uh, who is a therapist. He doesn't care. He's he's a pastor and a therapist, and he's flat out tell people leave, get out. I don't do that because I don't I don't want you to ever turn back and say you made a decision based on what I told you. I do ask questions that will lead you to your own conclusion. So what I would say to people um, is first of all. Make sure you have you're seeking God. You're seeking God about what to do and how to handle the situation. You and your spouse, if you're able to have candid conversation without screaming and hollering and you know going crazy in the house, have conversation that um, leads to resolve. Hey, this is how I'm feeling. This is how you're feeling. Can we resolve this? And then bring in a mediator, bring in a therapist, bring in a counselor, bring in a coach, bring in people who can help you guys navigate. Um, you can do it together. And then there are times when you may have to do it separately. But whatever the case may be, your well-being, your health, your children's health is very, very important. And what I learned from from my children is that they that they um, became a part. They became a recipient of grown folk business. They became they became a recipient of what we gave them. That's good. Right. We argued in front of them. We cussed and fussed in front of them. We had some arguments in front of other family members. We argued at church in front of our armor bearers and all we we just didn't care. It, 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 it that's how toxic it was. We just it didn't even matter where we had it out at, we just had it out. So you have to get to a, a space within yourself to make a decision what's good for you. What do you yeah. deserve? What do they deserve? Sometimes you have to love people enough to leave them. That's good, Dana. Say that again, Dana. That's good. Sometimes you have to love people enough to leave them. And sometimes you have to love yourself enough to leave. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. That part. Somebody, go ahead. Somebody asked the question, Charles Osborne. And then, y'all, there's so many dynamics of trauma. We're going to deal with it. Sheree, if you have any questions, I'm going to let you, you know, ask Dana what you need to ask her. What do you say to that person who doesn't want to get help? Uh, who doesn't want to get help? And um, that's that's Charles' question. That's a it's brother. It's so, so difficult. Um, in, in my first marriage, I said, let's go to counseling because we had started talking about separation. I said, well, let's go to counseling because I was taught you for better, or for worse. You try to make this thing work. And so that was my first answer was, hey, let's go get counseling. And his response was, we're not going to get no counseling because I don't trust nobody who they're going to tell my business, blah, 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 blah. So that's a place of pride because <laughs> at some point that's right. it's almost like the mother who said, I don't care. Give me the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Yeah. She said, I don't care. I'm desperate. Mm -hmm. And so when you're really concerned about making it work, you resolve every, you exhaust all of your options. And then you come back to the table. So a lot of times pride sets in as to why people don't get the help that they need. And there's nothing you can do, Charles, to, um, to make them see that that's what needs to happen. And so... It is what it is. So yeah. here's what I know, y'all. Love is worth fighting for, but not if you're the only one fighting. If you're that's the good. only one fighting, that's, that's, good. that's it. That's a hard fight. That's good. That's a hard fight, y'all. Yeah. And that's in it. That's not just marriage. That's, that's any mm -hmm. relationship that yeah, if yeah. you want it more than the other person want it, and it's almost, it's almost like you're tricking yourself because I that's where I was. I was in, I was like, okay, it's a one-sided fight. What what's what are you doing? And I think it was because of the the church people. I was just and, and I guess I didn't want to let God down. Mm. I just want to make sure that I did everything I was supposed to do according to his word as a wife before I just clock out. And right. so I was still fighting, but I was fighting by myself. So what sense did that make? It doesn't. It's almost like a hamster on the on the on the uh, going, thing. You moving, but you ain't making you're, no progress. You're going nowhere fast. Nowhere. Right. 
And so, y'all, we have to, that, that's the elephant in the room that we don't like to deal with. Because I know leaders, Dana, mm -hmm. friends, mm -hmm. executive leadership, you mm -hmm. know, who they stay because it's just, I'm going to lose my church. Mm -hmm. Come on, Nate. Mm -hmm. let's, come on. Let's deal with the elephant, y'all. I'm going to lose my church because ain't no church going to want a pastor, male or female, mm -hmm. who's forced. Lord have mercy. So I stay miserable. The kids yeah. see the tension. They feel the weight in the house. That's why I'm dealing with the subject, y'all. I'm sorry if it goes against your, and that's what we talked about yesterday. Everybody won't Bible for stuff before we deal with the issue. For real, mm -hmm. come on. Mm -hmm. That ain't setting nobody free. It ain't mm -hmm. setting nobody free. So we got to learn how to deal with the stuff that's taboo in the local church. Yeah. It's so taboo. It's it's so taboo that most churches, as I've said many times, doesn't have a divorce recovery ministry. Nope. Like, how do I get over divorce? Mm -hmm. They their marriage ministry is not solid in a lot of churches because a lot of times the senior leadership marriage isn't solid. So who's going to be over marriage ministry? Singles ministry is is drastic <laughs> because the the person that's over singles ministry don't know how to live holy, ain't trying to be know. right, discipline all, you know, is undisciplined. So mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is it is taboo and it's settings like this that that allow a safe space to have a conversation that we need to have mm -hmm. about how do we navigate through this. And senior leadership, um I know a lot of senior pastors who said enough is enough. I'm going to stand up before my church and I'm going to tell them flat out, my wife and I will no longer be together. Mm -hmm. And this is one pastor I know gave the church the out and said this, give me 30 days, pray with me and for me for 30 days. If you decide that your pastor getting a divorce does not work for you and you need to go to Keep another up, church up, and you Travis. need to go to another church, then go to another church. And you are absolutely right, Travis. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. They put the, the D. They feel like a D is across their forehead. Um, but you have to make a decision that's going to work for you. And my right. peace is priceless. Right. Now that I have peace, I've worked too hard to get here. And yeah. I'm not going to let anybody take that away from me. And so I teach my children now. And it might be, I have five children. Four of them are uh, 21 and above. 21, 22, 24, and 27. They, none of them are married. None of them are married, and I think partially because of the scar, or none of them are even in committed relationships, quite honestly. And mm -hmm. I think part of it is because of the scarring Come on, baby. that they experience in watching what their parents went through, and then now finally seeing that marriage and being married to somebody like I am now in a healthy space mm -hmm. is possible. And so I see them, you know making those changes but i told them i started teaching them don't y'all don't y'all get married as young as i did don't even think about it yeah. what's your career path what's your what's, what you want to do with your life uh-uh we yeah. know y'all don't do what i did and i i wasn't trying to shove it down their throat or you know take them a noose around their neck and and, and and telling them not to do that but it's wisdom yeah. you don't even know yourself i ain't know myself i know 18 19 years old like what what the heck what was mm -hmm. i thinking about mm -hmm. It was not a good decision to get married that young. You have a whole life to live. You have yeah. places to go, things to do, businesses to start, degrees to get, all this stuff. People to me, move it, move, move, relocate, do something different. Don't don't allow yourself to be boxed in to what you see in your own family. Yeah. We know people in our families that are unhappily married, and we know who their girlfriends are. We know who they who their mistresses are. We know who they've been cheating. You know what I'm saying? Just dysfunctional yeah. behavior. Just dysfunction. And that is what we're passing on to our children. Instead of passing on living a God life, finding joy in your life, Come finding on, joy yeah. in who he's called you to be, finding joy in the fact that you have a voice. Yeah, you don't have to be silent. I was silenced. I diminished myself in so mm. many areas of my life because I was. This is what I was taught. You you humbly submit. Come if on, you, you with a dogmatic man, you humbly submit. You just you know you just bow out, and then I just became aggressive. 
and I just I had anger management issues. Now I'm not bowing out. <laughs> you said what? Ninja what? <laughs> well, we got to go for blows because you have lost your mind. So I don't have police at my house. I don't have my neighbors say, are you okay? Do we need to take you somewhere? Oh, I don't deal with all of that. So yeah, I'm not know. coming from a space of not knowing what it is to be sick. I'm, no. I'm telling you, I know what it is to be in, in, in a toxic relationship. I know what it is to be mentally sick. Not yeah. not mentally ill, but mentally sick. Yeah. I know what it is. I, yeah. I know what it is to be to be that way. And I want to encourage all of you to find your place of healing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is possible. I found my place of joy, and it takes my baby boy Blake to say it best. He said, Oh my, you were already a whole healed and a happy person. And then here comes Craig. To compliment your happy. Yeah. Craig doesn't make me happy. He compliments on, the happy young woman that I already am. Yes. He found me in a space. He found me in the right space. Yes. So we can love one another. And he has his own testimony about being in a toxic marriage. Come so on. you talking about two people who come out of a toxic place who have fought hard to be healed and then mm. have fought hard for our children to be healed because they live in the house of toxicity, of hollering and screaming. I'm talking about both sets. I'm talking about both our kids. I'm talking about my, my bonus boys lived it. Yeah. So I'm not talking to you about what I don't know. I'm talking to you about what I know. And I'm talking to you about what God can do. And I'm talking about your determination to no longer want to be that way. I'm talking about even if you're not in a relationship, just want to have joy, just want to be peace, yeah. just wanting to flow in the things that God has placed in your hands to do for real mm -hmm. understanding that that's what God promised me. He promised me peace. He Jehovah Shalom. So why would I not want to? Why would I not want to have this place of peace that He has for me in my mind, in my heart space? Good, freely, now I can freely love. Now I can freely, freely. love. Pray yes. the way He deserves to be loved because I know what real love feels like now because I allow God to love me. I, yes. I allow God to heal me. I allow God to do all the work. And in a few weeks ago, I preached a. Uh, uh, a message behind closed doors at a women's conference called the recovery room. What a, what, what a, mm. what, a what an amazing, amazing thing for, for a women's conference. Yeah. The recovery I room. And I talked about behind closed doors with the story of Elisha and the Shudamite woman. Yeah. How okay. her, I'm just going to fast forward. Her son died. He had, he, uh, Elisha had made her a promise. You've been blessed. You've been blessing us. You blessed us. You gave me a room in your house. You and your husband are the bomb. Thank y'all so much for blessing us. What can I do for you? She's like, sir, I don't need nothing from I'm you. Good. So he says to his servant, Elisha says, servant, what you know about this lady? What can we do to bless her? The servant says, uh, she has an old husband. He old in age and they don't have no son. Very specific. Come now, on. They don't have any children. They don't have any. Son. They don't have a son. They don't have anybody to carry their lineage. They don't mm -hmm. have anybody to carry their bloodline. Very specific. Then Elisha says, "By this time next year, you gonna have a son. This time next year, she has a son. This son grows up, and he runs. The Bible says he runs out into the field to see his father. And he says, Dad, my hair hurt. My hair hurt so bad.' And the daddy said, uh, servant, take 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 this boy to his mama. The, he takes the boy to his mama. The boy." Fought, he dies in her lap. She takes this same little boy up to the room that she created Lord, for Lord. Elisha. She lays him in the bed and goes and finds Elisha and yes. says, Sir, you made me a promise. Come on. Sir, you told me that I would have a son. I have him now. Now Woo. he's dead. Now what you going to do about it? Come Basically, on, Dana. She checked him. <laughs> in a very nice humble way but she like sir now you 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 get i got a boy now what we gonna do behind closed doors elisha gets there and he lays his whole yes. body he closed the door and locks the door now y'all know us as mamas a black mama especially like ninja what's about to happen why you why i can't see what you about to do but she trusted him <laughs> yes he closes the door he locks the door and he lays his whole body on top of this baby and he does what god tells him to do about this son he gets back up the body the boy's body is warm i'm talking about what happens behind closed doors oh, what i'm saying to you is that you cannot ooze your sickness out on everybody i'm telling you that you cannot ooze out your Come business on. everywhere i'm telling you that you cannot post everything on social media i'm telling you that Come you on. cannot post things even to your family i'm telling you that you cannot allow yourself to tell all 
your scars. All of your star scars cannot be Ooh. shown. So behind these closed doors, the Bible says Elisha to go back and forth in the room until he gets another download from God. And then, hallelujah, the, um, oh, y'all got me preaching. Do it. Oh my God. No. He puts his body back on top of the child and the Bible says he gets up and the boy sneezes seven times. Come on. And he wakes up. Let me tell you something. Behind closed doors is where Dana. you get an impartation from God. Behind Dana. closed doors is where your healing really takes place. Behind closed doors Dana. is when you bleed out and there is a spiritual and accepted by way of Holy Spirit. There's a spiritual and accepted. God leads you to midwives and intercessors yes. and people that can take care of you while you are behind the closed door. You cannot allow yourself to spew out all of this stuff on other people. It's oh, not Dana. fair to other people. It's not fair to get another another relationship and you are not healed and then Come you on. bleed out on that person that could be the one oh, for man. you but you bleed out on them and cause them to run away from you so i'm telling y'all today yeah. do the work behind the closed yeah. door Come on now. Do the work behind closed doors do the work that is Ooh. necessary uh. for your healing so that when you when we see your scar, we see a heel scar. Yes. We don't see a scar that still got scabs on it, and a scar that's still stitched up, and a scar that's still bleeding. We see a healed person Dana. who also talks from a healed space. Yes. You don't talk from a place of sickness, Come and on. a place of disease, and a place that causes other people to say, "Oh my God, we don't even want to never see her again." Like she's crazy. We don't want we don't want that to be the testimony, but we want the testimony Ooh. to be that I met a man or a woman who was healed and they led me to a place called healed. Yes. Come on, Dana. So we the body of Christ, the problem is is that we have so many pastors who don't know how to deal with crises. That's good. We have pastors who don't know how to deal with crises. And so instead of them covering us and helping us through what we're dealing with, they throw us out to the wolves and they allow the wolves to uh, to attack us and to, sh to shut us down and to, to kill us and kill our destiny and kill our purpose. Right. Instead of taking us, wrapping us up in a blanket, putting us up on their shoulder and taking us behind closed doors. Come on, Come on, Dana. Dana. We can be healed and we can be whole. That Ooh. is my indictment against the church what how how do you act like you don't have, you've never been sick how do you act like you've never been you never had an embarrassing humiliating moment how no. do you act like there's nothing wrong with you when we all have had a cross to bear we Come all on, have, have had some embarrassing moments we all have had things that happen in our lives that knocked us to our knees yeah. nobody wants to be divorced nobody wants the public Come humiliation on. nobody wants to d on their forehead or on their chest Dana, Dana, it's not Dana. a badge of honor but what it is no. is to say that i went through a moment in my life i went through a season in my life and this is not who i am god healed me and he brought me out my marriage was not good for me he beat mm. me my marriage wasn't good for me my life was off my marriage wasn't good for me uh he talked to me any kind of way my marriage just wasn't good for me and now when i come out of that toxic place and i'm behind closed doors to whereby a, an elisha can get a hold to me and, and speak life back into me and breathe back into me and minister to me and pray Pray for me. I come into a place of healing, so now I can tell somebody else. That's why I coach divorced moms. That's why I coach first yes. ladies. I said first ladies. That's why they come in my inbox and ask me, "How did you go through your divorce and you was a first lady?" Because I'm not afraid to show my heel. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Heel scars. Yeah, heel scars. Yes. My heel scars. Dana, listen, listen, Dana. This is this is so powerful because Cherie, I don't know. Dana, take a sip of water. I know you got some coffee, but, but Cherie, <laughs> Cherie, yes, it's the problem, sis. Though we don't. Number one, we don't like to be behind closed doors. One, mm -hmm. two, we don't stay behind the closed door long enough. That's real. Is that? Because Dana, that's so good because we never get out of the spotlight. We never mm -hmm. become unseen. We stay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know people like, you know, on, it's man. one relationship and I'll deal with family. Mm -hmm. The next Thanksgiving, it was a traumatic breakup. But then mm -hmm. New Year's Eve, it's a new person. You got somebody else. I'm talking about Thanksgiving, you were traumatized by one 
But New Year's Eve party, you getting a fist bump from a new dude. What's up, cuz? Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Dana, mm -mm. Tariq, I don't think we stay behind we don't. the door long enough so God can heal. We don't. Us. Many don't. Mm -hmm. Many don't. Not everybody. Right. Do y'all see that as a as a concern, Sheree? I'll let you jump in. Yeah. I, um, I knew we I think it's a fear of fear of missing out again. Then we trying to trying to please people. We trying to prove to our ex I still got it. It's a plethora of things, but you gotta stay behind closed doors so God can do the work. Because just like she said, if you come out too soon, you're gonna be bleeding all over everybody, and ain't nobody gonna want to be around you. Yeah. And so people talk. You do know that. So mm -hmm. you out here talking crazy, acting a fool. Nobody gonna want to be around you. Now they may go out with you and and get what they want from you. You you know what I'm saying? But ain't nobody trying to boo up with you and marry you because you crazy. Because you haven't let God do the work. Dana, what were some of the things you did behind closed doors? I know everybody's surgery is different. Mm -hmm. but what advice mm -hmm. would you give people? What what you know? And I'm not. And y'all, marriage is one question. There's some family drama going on. Dana, we all got family drama. Mm -hmm. Where it's it's mama, it's daddy issues, it's traumatic stuff mm -hmm. from my past. Mm -hmm. my, my auntie raped me, my uncle molested me. It's mm -hmm. we ain't even got into that, Dana. We ain't even got into that yet. Mm -hmm. That's why we gotta bring you back next week if you don't mind, sis. I don't mind. But what were some of the things? when you just exhale because when you're behind closed door dana the, the womb can be open ain't nobody back there but you and god what what yeah. did god what were some of the steps you took that you can help the room with how many live do we have sheree 327 327 people alive what would you say dana are some things that they could do when they're isolated from the public <laughs> so when we lose anything there's a grieving process mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if it's divorce loss of a job loss of a friendship whatever it is we lose something there is a grieving process and so i so i deal with the five uh steps of grief which is denial anger bargaining depression and acceptance i i, I don't necessarily know what order i went in those things denial anger bargaining depression or acceptance i don't know what order um they fell in but i know that i went through those steps. I went through depression. I went through mm -hmm. feeling some kind of way. I went through the denial Absolutely. of this is not happening to me. <laughs> that was my favorite little statement. This is not, this is not happening to me. Wow. Like, how is this happening to me? I tried to be devoted, loyal, and sometimes we can be loyal to a fault and yeah. it hurts us to be mm -hmm. that loyal to somebody that's not that loyal to your, to you. So, um, I went through so much behind closed doors of 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 coming to my own self of saying girl some of this was your fault and being honest with mm -hmm. the things that were my fault and being right. honest with the fact that you allow so much of this behavior that you experienced yeah. you you allowed it to happen you allowed it to get this far because you diminished your voice so come on those doors i gave my voice back <laughs> Behind closed doors, yeah. my prayer life, I thought I prayed before. I thought I was an intercessor before. My Behind closed doors, Dana Berry Ministries was actually birthed through mm. my separation and divorce. My prayer ministry was birthed officially through my separation and divorce. So I gained new identity. I gained new treading. I, I gained yeah. new momentum behind closed doors. I was able to look myself in the mirror. That's why when when uh, when I talk about identity, I deal with Michael Jackson saw a man in the mirror a lot because it's the fact of the matter is if you if you can ever just look at yourself in the mirror without your makeup lip gloss you know look at your freckles and all the different blemishes and all the stuff on your face that's the real you and mm -hmm. then go behind all of that and deal with your mindset your heart space when you you have to learn how to spend some time by you gotta learn how to love yourself that's right the crowd that's right that's what happens behind closed doors you really love begin to love yourself mm -hmm. without being the pastor the intercessor the mom the ex-wife the co-worker all of those other things that people call you i'm just dana at the end that's of the it. day and how do i deal with me and all of this mess 
that 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 is being discussed in the church streets. It was so many things being said that I had to stop answering my phone and responding to text messages because it was so much stuff being said that was not true. And I kept finding myself trying to, trying to, well, that ain't true. This is what really happened. And God just said, I'm going to vindicate you, but stay behind yeah. closed doors. Yeah. You be quiet. Stop responding. You don't have to respond. Yes. You yes. don't have to give an answer because I'm going to vindicate you in due season. And when I tell you, stand behind those closed doors, even when I didn't want kicking and screaming mm -hmm. behind closed doors in my car, pulling up in the uh, in, in the driveway of my house and, and uh, my kids getting out and I'm sitting in the car bawling because I wanted to go bust out some windows. I wanted to go kill somebody. I didn't mind the orange suit. I had kind of counted up the cost that I'm tired of this. But I had to stay behind closed doors yeah. and I had to allow God to process me. We don't like process. Mm hmm. We don't like we don't we don't like the popcorn on the stove. We we want the microwave popcorn. Come on. <laughs> we don't like process. We we yes. don't want to we don't want to make gravy on the stove. We want the gravy that's in the can because we don't like process. Come on, Dana. We don't like process. When you're being processed, it takes longer and things have to yes. be cut off of you. And God has to purge you and prune you and 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 deal with you for who you really are and get you down to the nitty gritty of the nitty gritty to take you and remind you who you are and him not who you are in them we get really caught up in what people are. we get really caught up in accolades but do we do, do we take the time to see if god is really pleased with what Come we're on doing? now is god really pleased with what what oh you want me to pray but is god pleased with me coming praying on your platform oh you want me to come is god do god come really on. want me to do that and so we don't take oh yeah they calling me no we want notoriety but we don't want to be processed. Mm -hmm. We want to, we want the platforms, but we don't want the process because yeah. the process is where you really get the testimony. That's what you try. That's where yeah. that's that, that that's what that's when you that's when you have your own wilderness experience. So mm -hmm. those are some of the things that I did. I, I I had to I had to just shut myself out, and I had a very small group of women of God, and maybe one or two men of God that I really leaned on yeah. that when I was in my worst of the worst moments that I could call and say, "I'm this child. I don't know what I'm about to do. I'm about to lose it. So mm -hmm. somebody come get me." <laughs> don't call, call come get me come don't, get me don't call me come yeah get me. come get me and i had friends like that yeah. i had one girlfriend she's like okay what we about to go do do you need me to go get, you need me to go get some garbage bags and duct tape and some bleach i'd be like what we about to go do what you need you know so then i had the friend you that had was some saying, I, like that in your life dana then i had one girlfriend that was like well, let's go into prayer i said i don't want to pray right now click and i hung up the phone <laughs> i don't want to pray right now I am livid. I am. I'm, I'm, I'm angry. I'm hurt. I'm upset. I don't want prayer. You pray for me when I hang up. But I want to get in the car with my girlfriend and ask me, do we need to go get some bleach and some duct tape and, you know, some, some electric tape? And, you know, let me get in her car. I don't want to talk to you right now. So you have to have people that balance you out. Now, I ain't going to kill nobody. I didn't, you know, but it crossed my mind. I'm not going to sit up here and lie. It crossed my mind because my reputation had been put on the chopping block. My yeah. my name had been put on the chopping block. Oh, yeah. I teach my kids. All you have is your name. So That's if it. you diminish my name and take my name, then I don't have a leg to stand on because every oh, time man. I walk in a room, it will be ain't that the girl? Ain't, mm -hmm. ain't she the one? Uh, 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 uh. And so I was angry that my name had been tarnished yeah. and that lies had been told. But I had to stay behind closed doors yeah. and be processed. When I tell you. Vindication is of the Lord and he will work things out on your behalf. You don't have to. You don't have to say Man. a word. Just stay don't behind the closed doors. Stay behind. And Dana, we're going to get one more question, but this is for every, so many people desire front stage, but they don't know the pressure of being in this, being under these Dana. lights, Dana. They see Sunday, don't they, Dana? They see Wednesday night and Jesus. But it, it hits different. <laughs> it hits different when you can't go nowhere and folk don't know you. It hits different. You can't just go out like normal people, even in the church. Cherie, you deal with it when you go out. I deal with it every single day. You you always feel like somebody. So it's one you you're being watched without stuff going on, mm -hmm. but let some hit the fan. Mm -hmm. And that's why that's I think that adds to the trauma of relationship. Because you know, we don't get to go through it by, behind closed doors. 
Our right. stuff is on display. Everybody mm -hmm. in your business, everybody know your business. So yep. yeah, you feel like you got that scarlet letter or whatever. So and and then you got to still stand up and preach. You got to still stand up and lead worship. Yep. All the while, everybody know what's going on in your house. Absolutely. And yep. so, how you stay behind closed doors and still have this platform or still be present is that you still have to learn how to um, allow healing to take place behind closed doors. I go out and preach. I want to preach the word of God. That when I get in my office, intercessors, y'all better. I need y'all. Yep. So you still have those people mm -hmm. that are part of what what behind the closed doors, behind the scenes, the recovery yep. room, the triage. You have those people on, that man. are covering and protecting you, yes. even though you still have to work your assignment. Yes. Um, it. I was just grateful. I was just like, Lord, I, I really went nowhere. I went to work and I went to church. And so many people at church really didn't know what was going on. So, so I was able to just kind of, kind of had in the crowd. I hid in a crowd at a church for 10 months. Wow. 10 months. The pastor and his wife knew why I was there, but many people did not know what was going on until I started sharing my testimony. Mm -hmm. So you have, you, you have to ask God for wisdom. Where do I go? That's a safe place. Where do I go to be hidden? Where do I go so that I can? That's good, Dana. Dana, that's good. Um, you, yes. you have to, you have to have that safe. You do oh. have to definitely have wisdom and allow Holy Spirit to guide you where you go. Who do you confide in? Who is safe? Who, you know, because we're so emotional going through things that we just be talking and the person just taking down the information and they done talking to you and they just sharing the information with That's somebody. The hard part, so That's that it. our emotions cause That's us to talk part. too much. And mm -hmm. then sometimes our emotions cause us not to talk enough because we are taught what That's goes so on in this house stays in this house. So how do I then know That's who so do I divulge what's going on in my house too? Yes. So that they can cover me and cover me properly. Mm -hmm. So it is not an easy thing. So I'm not I'm not here to say that it's easy because it was tumultuous, even for my children. They looking like, okay, well, can I trust them? You know, that's Pastor So and so son. So, you know, they was my friend, but I can't talk to them because they gonna go tell their mom and daddy what I said. Mm -hmm. It's it is it's a serious yeah. situation that you have to know how to navigate through. So it's right. definitely learning how to be processed and having wisdom and discernment on who to talk to. Let me grab this one. I say one question to Pastor Oris. I saw your question. I'm going to try to get to that one. Even after divorce, EJ Perkins said, how do you move on when your lives are so intertwined? Like kids, routines, like still got to see each other. Got to. Mm, that's good. The thing is, <clears throat> marriage is for grown people. Divorce. It's for grown people, Come like on, it's up. mature. And so unfortunately, we live in a society where um, because we are emotional beings and we're hurt and we're upset, no matter whose fault it is or however the situation went down, we have to be mature enough to make decisions for our children. We have to be yeah. mature enough to say, I don't even really like you, but <laughs> But because we have children together, we are going to make this work. We have to be, we have to be amicable. Mm -hmm. And so if, you know, I'm a blended family. So my boys, my boys, my bonus boys are 12 and nine. So there are events that I've had to go to and their mom is present or their mom. Tell me present. about that, Dana. And it has not always been great. It has not been wonderful. Um, and, and <laughs> <laughs> Why, Lord? No, Why? I can't stand you. Why so I because I, I I had to take the high road, and this is part of my testimony. I really won't get off into a lot of it because we still being processed through this. We still behind closed doors with some of this stuff that we're that my husband and I are going through. Mm -hmm. But I just told my husband, you know what? I love those boys so much. I'm not going to participate in this foolery. I'm not going to allow mm -hmm. them to bring me into a into being who I'm not. Yeah. And so I had to make a decision to be a mature bonus mom, a mature second wife. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing this with y'all. So, um, so I've had to have candid conversation with their mom to say, we're not doing this anymore. We've done this long enough. You don't like me. You don't like you don't like their father. I mean, like, really, you really don't like us. And I can't say. So 
at the end of the day, it's about those two boys yeah. that live in the house with me anyway. So they live in my house. You should, you should, you should even want to try to have a relationship with me because I could right. be a stepmother and not be the bonus mom that I am. I could be the stepmom that that that's right. pinching them, punching them, talking nasty, being verbally abusive because I because of our situation. So you have a mature woman who is saying to you, "Let's get along at least for the sake of these babies." Yeah. So um that's yeah, so that's that's, 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 that's I can't even I can't even give y'all all of that on on air, but praise the Lord. Close <laughs> doors. <laughs> Oh Last question, God. Dana. And Dana, we'll get your schedule. And uh, I see the questions coming in, y'all. We we got to stop with this one, yeah. though. Uh, Pastor Dana, you said that you regained your voice once you came out. But what else had you given up of yourself to stay in that toxic relationship? I gave up my destiny. I gave up my purpose. Mm -hmm. I gave up who I was supposed to be in God. Like I lost myself in doing what I was taught I was supposed to do, which the traditional first ladies teach you, you all about your kids and your husband. It's not about you. It's all about your kids and your husband. So um, so I good. decided I'm going back to school. I'm about to I'm about to get in Mary Kay. I'm about to do all this stuff. I I, reca I became rebellious before we separated, if you will. I looked at him one day. I said, I'm about to go back to school. He looked at me like, you about to do what? I said, I'm about to sell Mary Kay. And he looked like, what? I said, I'm on my way to my Mary Kay meeting. And I'm on my way to my client's house. And I'm on my way. And he looking like, who is this person? Because I don't know her. Because traditionally, I was... Thought to be like his mother, who yeah. I honor and respect. But her generation is wash clothes, cook clean, you know, do all the things for your children and your spouse. But there was no, there was really no, no room to be yourself or have your own identity. So I, I, I had to, get, I had to say, okay, what do, what do I like? I forget what I liked. Right. I didn't know. I didn't have my own style of dress anymore. It was always what he wanted me to wear, the color polish he wanted me to have, the hairstyle he wanted, the color in my hair he wanted. Everything was, I was a Stepford wife. Mm. So I gained back my destiny, my purpose, my DNA and oh, God. God. I gained my voice back. Oh. I, no, no, I don't want that. No, I don't like that. <laughs> no, I don't want to go there. <laughs> no, I only went there because that's where he wanted to go. I don't want to go there ever again. Ever. So I, you know, so my husband and I have those, <laughs> we joke and laugh about those things because it's the same way with him. He like, no, nah. <laughs> certain things we just don't want to do no more because you know it, it's the trauma that that was there and we healed now, but it's like I'm good on now. No, no, I don't eat that. I'm good on that. So yeah, I I, I had to do a whole metamorphosis. Dana Barrett, I could Dana that person you just want to go kick it with. Just, <laughs> Dana, yes, it's just so good. Thank you so much. And an honor. I, I feel like Cherie, the I think we ought to sow into her today. I've Absolutely. already sold my seed. I, oh listen, my if you want to give anything to her, you can. This ain't yeah. got nothing to do with the gas. We're giving gas away Saturday, Dana. A thousand dollars in free gas this oh, Saturday. Oh, that is amazing. Uh, yes. And but I, I like what you said, and I think this will be a good. I think this will be, and y'all put in the comments, Pastor D. On Pastor the D. memo line. In the memo line of the faith room, Pastor D. And everything you sow is going right to her. Listen, stay behind the the closed door, and heal. I don't know if that'll work, y'all. Stay well, behind for today. Yeah, stay okay. behind the closed door and heal. That works for me. So important. Now, Dana, I'm gonna I'm gonna be messy. So, do you still keep date, duct tape around, or do you <laughs> like like do you keep it nearby just in case somebody want to ask? I always keep some in the trunk. I do not keep that um, electric. She heal, y'all. No, I am healed for real. I'm for real. No, I really have saw. I'm I'm so serious, y'all. I wouldn't be on. I wouldn't be on the faith room today, for real, for real, because I sat outside my ex husband's home where he stayed with his mistress, and I contemplated the whole thing. I wasn't I was not gonna kill her because it wasn't even about her. I didn't have I didn't have a covenant with her. I had a covenant with you, and you and you messed up our covenant. 
on so many different levels, not just being with her, so many different mm -hmm. levels, you messed up our covenant. And so I had gotten in my head, I had it all planned out. And I was so out cold in my head. I told her, call the police. I'll be tell them I'm sitting here waiting for them. I'm, I, I did what I did and they can come take me. If you single, do not go to Detroit looking for no wife. <laughs> Listen. Yes, you do. I'm a good wife. I'm Atlanta good wife. is wide open. California oh, is wide open. I heard Jesus. Judge. See, I watch enough Judge Mathis to know y'all. Yes. The woman in Detroit. Don't play. Do not go to Detroit messing around. All right. That's all I'm going to say on that. Dana. You have been a blessing. Life, yes, laughter yes. was good today, but but the seriousness of the conversation yes. was also good. Cheree, any final words? And y'all so into my sister. You I don't know. What's up. your favorite? What's the spot in Detroit? Is that like a soul food spot, Dana? Are you a vegan? I don't know what you think. Uh, I am not a vegan. <laughs> no. <laughs> I like a lot of different Detroit. things. Soul food. Joe Louis uh, Soul Food Kitchen on Woodward and West Grand Boulevard is amazing. Um, but I like my husband loves steaks. So we had a lot of steak restaurants and, you know, so it doesn't matter. Whatever. Um, we just like to eat. We like food. We're foodies. <laughs> we yeah. now we started on the thing of trying new restaurants. So. You just foodies. That's good. Joe Lewis. So Sheree, you gotta write that down if we ever in Detroit. Joe Lewis. If y'all ever in Detroit, y'all better do me up. That's what y'all better do. Yeah, yeah that's right. We don't need to be driving around Detroit. All right. I, what I'm thinking for. Just call Dana. <laughs> I got you. That's right. What well, Sheree, any final words, Elder? This was a great show. Today sis. was phenomenal. I think so many people were blessed. I was just reading all I couldn't put every comment up because some of them yeah. were very lengthy. They would have covered up our guests. So that's why I couldn't put them up. But People were, they were, some people like, this is like deja vu, listening to your story. And I think that's part of the reason uh, we connected. So because mm -hmm. some of our testimony is so similar. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah. And, and she's just a testament that God can pull you out of it. Whatever you're in. I said it yesterday. Nothing catches him off guard. Mm -mm. He already knew it was going to happen. He already knew the outcome. And so stay behind closed doors yeah. so he can yeah. heal you. And I need to say this, Dana. Y'all listen. Fight for your marriage, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're not mm -hmm. in here saying, okay, I'm out. Peace. Mm -hmm. Fight. But then Absolutely. there's the alternative that you have to come to that conclusion on. Yeah. So I just want to be on record. We we didn't come in here saying leave and do oh, all. No, we didn't. I believe you should fight for it. That's the Absolutely. integrity in me. But I also know the flip side to any relationship, whether it's a significant other. Some of y'all been engaged for 25 years. Now, something wrong with that. Yeah. Your wedding yeah. not even fun because y'all been living together 30 years. What I mean, y'all What y'all going to do when y'all leave the wedding? What, come what to my this? office and I'll marry y'all. Come on. I mean, there's so many things that we just got to make the tough decisions, y'all. Yes. And, and Pastor Dana did that. And we and next time, we'll get into the family dynamic. Mother, sister, mm -hmm. brother. Mm -hmm. the, the dynamics of the family unit uh, that we see so often. Dana, will you pray for us, sis? And just for those who may be dealing with trauma of a relationship, uh, they're not behind the closed door, but they need to get behind the closed door. Mm -hmm. Just close yeah. us out in prayer. Hallelujah. And, uh, and we're sowing. I've already sown, sis. You, you at least in the steak today. Now, y'all handle her size. I got the steak. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Oh, Thank you. Go ahead. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We honor you. We adore you. You are an amazing savior. You are a good, good father. You're so good that, oh God, that you catch us in our own blood. You yes. save us and you pull Thank us you. up out of our own trauma. Yes. And so Father, today I ask that you would touch all of your sons and daughters that are on this live or that will come back and watch the replay. Father, touch them in their vulnerable areas. Touch them in the areas of their hurts, their yes. pains from relationships, Father. And I speak now that healing will take place, that That's there will be an Elisha true. who will grab them up and put them behind a closed door and begin yes. to minister healing and wholeness to them. Father, I thank you now for midwives and intercessors yes. and uh, prophets and people who are authentic in your kingdom, who help restore yes. us back to healing and wholeness. Father, I thank you now for rehabilitation in the spirit. 
Yes, Lord. yes, God. I thank you now, oh God, that you take us to a place of recovery that we will yes. only know that it came from you. So, Father, touch those that are going through divorce, touch those that are separated, touch those that are single and wanting to get in a committed relationship and ultimately get married. Father, touch wherever we find ourselves today. Yes. You are a God that can touch us wherever we are. And so, Father, we thank you now. Hallelujah. You, and we come against the enemy that comes to snatch away our healing, to snatch us out yes, of Lord. the belief that you can heal yes, us. Lord. Father, we thank you now that you are not slack concerning Hallelujah. your promises Hallelujah. over Hallelujah. our lives, that your promises are yes and amen to the Hallelujah. glory of God the Father. So we thank you now that Lord. there's no weapon that is formed against us that shall prosper. Thank there's you, no man. tongue that rises up against us in judgment that you cannot <laughs> condemn. Thank Father, we thank you that you are Jehovah Rapha. Yes. You are the God that heals every yes, area Lord. of our lives. Yes, the question is asked in your word. Is there not a bomb in Gilead? Yes. Father, we thank you that you are the bomb that we need. Thank we you, thank Lord. you that you are healing. You are the ointment. You are the solution. You are the answer to our problems. You are the answer to our anguish, into our hurts and our pains, into thank our you, humiliation. Oh God, you are the answer and we give thank you Lord. glory. Thank you. Lord. Honor and praise belongs to you. And yes, we give sir. your name honor, God. And we thank you now. And we thank bless you. you for Pastor Nate. We thank bless you, you for Elder Cherie that yes, gives us this platform and this opportunity to have yes, candid sir. conversations, to come to the family table, to yes. have conversations yes. that heal us from the inside <laughs> out. And we are not walking Lord. around faking thank it until Lord. we make it. We want to heal Lord. and make it. Glory thank to God. Lord. And so we thank you now, God, that the faith Amen. room is that place that thank you are you. expanding that you are, not, are giving them what they need thank and you. we thank you now God that it is so that whatever they it stand in need of God that you are a God that hears and answers thank oh God you, that you are a God that touches you, even our tears oh God thank that you are the God that would touch oh God your son Nate and your yes, daughter yes, Sharif yes, we yes, thank yes. you God for thank our host we thank you for this safe place thank and Lord. we thank give you. your name praise honor and glory yes, and we thank you now that it is so in Jesus name name amen hallelujah. and amen hallelujah. hallelujah thank you thank you thank y'all have a great day Woo. ain't nothing else to say peace bye y'all Woo, jesus <laughs>